There will be about Dagger and dependency in injection framework for Android. Thanks. Uh, hello. I'm Mateusz Ferry, and I work as Android developer at Base CRM. And I'm co organizer, co -organizer of uh, GDG uh, meetups in Krakow in Poland. Uh, so Berlin and Germany is not the only place when you have a lot of GDGs. And I'm partition of uh, on GitHub, so you can you can find me and and check my stuff. I do some mm, some things that uh, can be used tomorrow on Hackathon because they work from API level one, so you can try them. And today I will talk about inject with uh, Dagger, and I will start with a simple simple example. Let's say that we got a component called API, and this component is some kind of abstraction over, uh, over the RESTful methods. And in this simple piece of code, do you see any problems? What is the problem here? Come on, guys. <laughs> Everything is written in Java. Ah, <laughs> what else? <laughs> OK, um, so to see the problem, we need to think about testing. And I'm just uh, advertising RoboElectric here because uh, we are using RoboElectric for our unit tests because they run fast. And it makes it possible to run unit tests. But if you have this piece of code and you want to write the unit test, uh, you, should, you should care about how unit tests should, uh, should uh, work and should, uh, should be like. So unit test need to be fast, need to be simple, and need to be unit. If you have like a, some kind of login, uh, login component, login process to, to your application, and you want to unit test it, uh, you should mock out all those dependencies that are, uh, are not strictly related to the unit that you are testing, right? So if, you're, uh, if your unit test is connecting to the HTTP web service, it's not unit test. If your unit test is connecting to the database, it's not unit test. So um, having that, if you want to write a unit test for that, uh, we got all such panda. Because it's, because, well, of course, it's possible to mock out the HTTP component in here. We can, we can use the class loaders, for example. If we use the RoboElectric, we can expose some kind of shadow for this component. But, well, why do we need to do that? We can like just use another approach. And what is the correct approach? Uh, if uh, you are if uh, you are working in a company and then suddenly in summer some uh, intern developers uh, came to your company, they might uh, want, for example, to. Uh, propose this solution like, oh, let's expose the HTTP as a public field. And uh, in test, we'll just override this field before we start to use it. But well, it's not a solution, right? It's like even worse, I guess. And yeah, the other approach, which is uh, being used by developers, sadly, is like exposing the setter, uh, especially for that field. So uh, on, uh, in production code, I, when you are in runtime, when you are running on phone, you are setting the correct implementation of the HTTP that is indeed uh, connecting to the web service and performing some, uh, some, mm, some network tasks. And then in test, you use some mocked uh, HTTP to insert using this setter. But this and this are all the same. It's like the same badness. <coughs> And what's the problem with, uh, with that setter and uh, like uh, some, some kind of lazy constructing dependency for the object? Uh, if our API cannot be used uh, without, the, um, without the HTTP dependency, why should we be able to construct it without the HTTP in the constructor, right? Uh, Best, best scenario is that we get like illegal state exception from the API method because we perform some state check and uh, checked for, for null. But if your component 
uh, cannot run with, without other component, it should be visible in constructor. So everyone who mm, didn't write your, uh, your code but wants to test it, uh, instantly see that uh, he needs to supply such dependencies directly to constructor to start working with that component. Okay. Mm. So this looks better. Mm. We got the private final field HTTP and we put it into the constructor and every time we wire the, AP, uh, the API component, we need to satisfy the dependency in order to create that object. Cool, but what's the problem? The problem is that HTTP got dependency one and dependency one got two other dependencies which are all some polished samples, sorry. Uh, and, well, you, you get the point. We are way too lazy to satisfy those dependencies manually, aren't we? And the other, uh, the other problem is, is dry. Uh, you recognize dry? Don't repeat yourself. Well, don't repeat yourself is not only about taking 200 lines of code and copy, copying and pasting it to the another class. It's, it's about that, but not only. It's about duplicating the knowledge about uh, among the our code base and this is the knowledge that we use the this uh, specific HTTP implementation in our components. Let's say that we got s uh, that API uh, accepts some um, interface and HTTP is like uh, one of the implementations of of this interface. So if you are constructing uh, this HTTP to satisfy the API dependency in many places, then if you want to change that dependency to some other interface, because for example, you want to switch to another HTTP client under the hood, uh, then you got a problem. Uh, okay, but on Android, there is a little problem when you try to put all your dependencies to, to constructor, right? Because on Android, we've got services, activities, fragments, content providers, and so on, and what do, what do they want? Nor are constructors. Uh, so we cannot put our dependency in constructor because they are not constructed by us, they are constructed by Android framework, by Android platform, and they need empty constructors in order to run. Mm. Yeah, but let's stay with our dependency injection. Uh, using dependency injection, we can construct our objects like this. Every time you will be injecting the API to your components, HTTP implementation will be injected automatically for you uh, based on configuration of your, uh, or based on your setup. Uh, mm, how many Android developers are here? Cool, plenty of you. Uh, are you using dependency injection in your fra in in your apps? And what framework what framework do you use? Juice Dagger? Robot. Okay, cool. Uh, so, as you see on Android, dependency injection uh, pattern is it's nothing new, right? For years, uh, I think for four years already, we got uh, the Robot Juice. And I was big fan of RoboJuice and I was using it. But let's see at some RoboJuice summary description. RoboJuice is juice based, the same juice uh, with, uh, no, with no aspect oriented programming uh, included uh, that is running on servers, right? And it runs using the reflection. And believe me or not, Reflection is not the fastest way to inject your dependencies and is not working fast enough to satisfy your users if they are using not uh, quad core processors uh, in their smartphones. Mm. And yeah, the following quote, I found it recently on, on some blog and I really cannot agree more with, uh, uh, with that sentence. Mm. Because as I said, uh, not everyone has powerful phone in their pocket, right? They can like have like pretty crappy old phones or even worse, 
HTC Desire S, which is the biggest nightmare of Android development. Uh, one year ago, we have got in, in my previous company, I got a client from India. Mm, he was the product owner. And he owned that phone, and we were developing the app using Juice as dependency injection framework. And we had like every day uh, meetups on Skype. And then after like two months of development, suddenly he asked me, hey Nick, why the app is running so slow? E and well, and I couldn't not agree uh, with him because he was right. It was starting on his phone for five seconds to generate the graph that is needed in order to inject dependencies uh, using RoboJuice. It's a lot. Nobody will wait like seven seconds to, uh, to your app to load. And the RoboJuice solution is that the RoboJuice author created uh, mm, this activity in a framework so you can display a splash screen <laughs> and start out of your app as, it's be as the object graph is being, uh, being generated. So, well, RoboJuice is fine, but splash screens are not. So, mm, I guess we need to try a different, uh, different approach, different, different tool. And um, this year at Google I.O., uh, during the Google I.O., uh, Square Company uh, introduced something like a Square Seven Days of Open Source. Did you hear about it? For sure. And during, during uh, that, that week, uh, they, uh, they released the 1.0 version of Dagger because Dagger was there for, for two years already. But on this Google I.O. in May this year, uh, they released uh, it as a stable version 1.0 that is ready to be used on production. Mm. And what is Dagger and, and how it works? It's like framework of dependency injection for Java and Android. Well, it's specialized for Android because of performance, but it can be used without any problems in any, any other like Java applications. It's like pure Java. Nothing, un, nothing related to Android inside. And it's based on the code gen, and thanks, thanks to that, we got the compile time validation, which is also a very nice feature. So uh, what, how Dagger works is uh, um, before the Java C starts to compile your code, uh, it seeks for uh, mm, something like annotation processors uh, in your compile uh, class path. And as, as it finds the annotation processors, it runs them, and the annotation processors, based on the annotation that are Dagger related, are injecting stuff to your classes, are generating other classes that are re later used to. Mm, to insert proper implementation to your fields. We'll look at it uh, later. And yeah, well, almost all interesting features of dependency injection that you might need on Android are supported, almost. I will also ta uh, take a look what doesn't work in the end of the presentation. So this is not the simplest in the injection using Dagger, really, uh, because this model is not needed. Uh, the simplest injection, if we got, la let's say, a class, uh, that that is uh, like a concrete implementation, and is annotated with Dagger annotation inject. Uh, we can just inject the field, and create the object graph, based or on module or not. This uh, create method stakes uh, object varx as an argument, uh, so you can put their concrete objects of those models or just classes that are relatively recognized using the annotation and we perform inject on the object that we want to inject. And then recursively, it goes all around your uh, dependencies, dependencies of those dependencies, and so on, and is firing the dependencies for you. So that's almost the simplest uh, injection you can get in Dagger. It's a little more than you have to write when you use Juice, but what you get uh, is for sure the performance. So. Okay, but let's say I got a greeter, 
and the greeter got like two different implementations. Let's say there is a happy greeter and a sad greeter. And we want to inject the, the proper one, right? So, um, of course, we can do it. But as this is the uh, interface, it cannot be constructed without the knowledge which concrete implementation we want to inject for that field. So we need to create a model that has, oh, uh, that's like the longest class name ever, uh, that has like index parameter that points to the class that we want to inject. And we define the method which is annotated with provides annotation. And then Dagger automatically generates the inject adapter separated class specially for, for the class that we are injecting dependencies. And what, is, what does it simply doing is, uh, is associating I am happy field with the implementation returned from, uh, from that method. Pretty simple. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's the same as it was. Uh, oh, no. Uh, it's a little different because uh, if you got the multiple implementations, some of those multiple implementations can have also the constructors that are not on empty, right? So you need to wire like three dependencies in order to create the happy greeter. And Dagger, uh, Dagger wor works fine with that. You can like just define the provider uh, method with the argument of the concrete implementation and Dagger will inject the concrete implementation here to the provider. So it's like injecting to injector. We are going meta. And, and it's just returning the same object that is being injected to that provide. So let's say our happy greeter contains the logger inside, HTTP, and something else. We do not need to wire those, uh, those dependencies manually. They can be done. That can be done for us automatically. Mm. OK. Uh, one of the dependency injection standard annotations for Java is a singleton annotation, and it also supported on, uh, in Dagger. Uh, there are various ways of um, declaring the container singleton in Dagger. We can use uh, singleton annotation in provides. We can also annotate the whole class using the singleton annotation, and Dagger will automatically cache your instance and will, will inject the, same, the very same instance every time you inject from uh, that object graph because those, uh, because those uh, objects, those singletons, are singletons in the context of one single object graph. If you are creating another object graph, those are not singletons. Okay. Uh, and finally, we can inject via constructor, of course. Uh, we need to create a constructor in, uh, annotated with inject, so the very same as we do in juice, for example. And the happy greeter in this case. The implementation will be automatically wired for us. Uh, the, dis the little disadvantage of uh, Dagger is that um, even, if your con even if your constructor takes no arguments, you still need to declare empty constructor that does nothing and it's annotated with inject. So annotation processors can know that they need to use the empty constructor in order to, to create that object that will be late, later in injected. Uh, not everyone is happy, right? Uh, so also the, also the one of the annotations that is taken from the uh, Javax in inject package is the named annotation. So based on that annotation, uh, we can inject several dependencies uh, mm, to run our app, right? And the, fun, the fine thing is that we do not have to use the named annotation because we can use, oh, yeah, this is a provider that uses named annotation. So uh, in order to, to create this, you need to create also the model that, that has the provider methods annotated with named. But the fun thing is that the named annotation, what this really is, is a qualifier annotation. So you can create a qualifier annotation of your choice and based on them, inject uh, some other different implementations uh, to your components. So we can, s we can have, for example, the qualifier uh, annotation named activity and application. And based on that, 
we can inject different, uh, different implementations of, let's say, context or some context-based uh, components if we are running in the activity context or rather in application context or if we, we, if we for example, run service or, or activity or we are injecting to loader, we can use the application. Uh, as, uh, as, doc, as those uh, helper classes and adapters that are later in runtime used by Dagger to inject dependencies are generated at run and are generated at compile time, uh, uh, Dagger's annotation processor automatically displays uh, proper error messages for uh, for you as as you did something wrong, right? In Juice, if you if you broke something then mm, your application will crash and you will need to enter the logcat and, and say, oh, I forgot about, about this model. And now, when you are using Dagger, you can simply rely on the, uh, mm, on the Java C to, to generate your, uh, your compile time errors that are validating your configuration. Uh, mm, there is one thing uh, that is uh, often misunderstood by, by people. Dagger, without this annotation processor, can still work. And I'm not sure if it's good or not, but if, for example, your configuration of your build system is, uh, doesn't include, include the annotation processors in the compile class path, then Dagger will not generate the adapters, proper adapters for your classes, and will silently go into the reflection mode in runtime giving you only the log verbose, uh, so you will probably never know that it's not being generated. So if you are, so if you are using Dagger, uh, please uh, make sure that you are really, really using the code gen and the proper annotation processors are in class path. Mm. Uh, I already told you uh, how it works. Mm, annotation processors are not the rocket science. Uh, the standard that defines them is the JSR 269, and well, not not only Dagger uses uh, those those mm, those annotations. You can write your own. Uh, that's not a big deal. So, for example, if you want to validate your configuration more after Dagger does it, you can add your own annotation processors to display something. If, for example, someone is injecting wrong implementation somewhere. Mm, yeah, that's the title of that specification. Okay, so now I will tell you what doesn't work and why. Mm, we cannot inject to private fields, which is not bad, because as I already told you, uh, dependencies should you should try to inject your dependencies using constructors, right? If you are like injecting dependencies to the private field. Then in test, in order to mock that dependency, we need to use the dependency injection container, uh, which is necessary if we are testing services. But if we test some Java component uh, that that can have like can has like uh, mm, some custom mm, custom constructor, we do not need the Dagger or any other dependency injection framework. We can just keep our test simple and wire those dependencies manually, like injecting mocks inside. Uh, so, well, private, private injecting doesn't work because what Dagger simply does is generating the classes uh, that are uh, accessing that field. And those classes are in the same, same package as the, uh, as the class that has uh, injected dependencies. So this needs to be visible for, uh, for that adapters that are nearby. Uh, injection via setter doesn't work. Uh, this actually is thing that could work, but it's rather more than, uh, like a design decision that it doesn't work. Uh, maybe someday they will do it. I personally don't care that much about those setters, uh, those setters dependencies. And yeah, very sad thing. ProGuard is not working. Using ProGuard? How many of you use ProGuard for obfuscation, not shrinking? Okay, okay, so 
but only one part of ProGuard is not working, which is obfuscation. But uh, <laughs> it can be mm, it can be rescued by the keep annotation, which is also the part of ProGuard. And what we do what we do in our apps is annotating the dependency and also the classes that are having dependencies to be injected. All those classes that are being manipulated with Dagger with keep annotation, and that keep annotation tells that tells ProGuard to hey just do not change the name of this class. You can shrink the methods, you can uh, optimize anything, you can change the name of, of any method on or any field you got there, but please keep the name of the, de keep the, name of the dependency or the component so it doesn't get obfuscated and it doesn't blow in runtime, right? Because otherwise, uh, Dagger will tell you, oh, I cannot, oh. <laughs> Happened it like twice already. Uh, yeah, so that keep annotation is like a partial solution. Uh, if you look at the issues uh, on GitHub of, of Dagger, uh, guys that are responsible for Dagger development uh, already written that it's possible and it's doable to have a full support for obfuscation program using Dagger. Uh, but seems like this is not the highest purity. Uh, we can we can write a support by ourselves. There is there is actually one guy who, who has a fork of Dagger that is working fine uh, fine with ProGuard. Personally, I didn't check it because uh, Kib is like enough for me. Uh, yeah, you might want to try it. And how to use it? Uh, two jars are needed: Dagger jar, which is needed at runtime, and also of course in the in the compile t uh, compile time. It's really smart jar, I think it's like 100 uh, kilobytes. And Dagger compiler, which contains uh, nothing but uh, annotation processors. And this second jar doesn't need to be included in your, uh, in your APKs, doesn't need to be bundled. Uh, the only time you need it is the compile time. And it's available in Maven Central, of course. Uh, so you can use it in, in Gradle or, uh, or Maven. You cannot use it like this if you are still using Ant, but well. And questions. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, so the question was if there is a, like a proper way to inject the fields, right? Two fields when I'm in the context of, or of activity or service. So when should I inject uh, the fields or when should I use an injected constructor? Uh, yeah, that will be better. <laughs> so the question is uh, either to uh, inject a private or a field in our class or to use an uh, injected constructor to pass a dependency into a mm. class? In our project, um, we try to inject to constructors because that makes our test simple, uh, simpler and we do not have to rely on dependency injection framework in our tests, so they are super short and, and simple. But if you are, uh, for example, testing service because we are not testing activities using RoboElectric, that's only case for services in our case, uh, then you have no choice. There, there cannot be like an empty constructor, uh, non-empty constructor in that service because it won't be executed at runtime. So what we do is if we do a testing, unit testing of a service, we inject to the package protected field because you can inject to the package protected field. And then in test, we declare something like a test model that what, what it does is like via ring mocks instead of real dependencies that are later injected to that service. So, so yeah, if you are, in this, if you are uh, injecting to the service, you have no choice than just uh, inject to, um, to those fields. And if I would something inject something to a service, I would have to inject the service into the object graph, right? And the other way, I won't have to do that. Uh, you will need to inject the service to the object graph. Like I would have to say, hey, object graph, inject this. Okay, so mm, there is always like a starting entry point when you are injecting uh, two components. 
and services that that entry point that needs to execute the object graph on itself. Uh, so, for example, we do it in on create uh, because there you got the access to all the other services like the notification manager and and other things. Uh, things. And what we do in service is uh, where is it? It's simply this line: uh, object graph create for the model that is injecting dependencies of this service. Inject this, so it's injecting two fields uh, mm, to mm, to the service, and we got also some like abstraction layer over it. So in tests, uh, we can we can just execute some some helper method that tells uh, our Dagger facade, hey, if this service will be injecting uh, this model, do not inject this model, use this instead. So the wrong model that is uh, injecting the real implementations is not being used in tests. Does this answer your question? Cool. Yeah. Any other questions? There are some. How do you deal with contexts uh, and injection with Dagger? Like application context is easy, but activity context, how do you do that? Uh, well, we are not using Dagger to inject the activities uh, context at this moment uh, because we don't simply need it because we do not unit test the activities. Uh, but, but it's possible. You just need to create a model and object graph that will be used only in the context of this activity and can be shared in context of this activity and we'll just have it provides methods that will return context and will return the, uh, the activity, uh, activity reference. Because uh, happy model, for example, can have uh, can has a um, constructor that takes something. So this can be even the static class. And this model will accept the activity and then return the activity reference it's received in constructor in provides context method. And then if you are injecting something uh, in in the context of that activity, this will be injected for, uh, for you. How do you deal with uh, async task and anything that uh, doesn't run on the main thread? Uh, we are not using async task. Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm, for asynchronous operations, we use loaders, and those loaders uh, can also have the um, the object graph injects right. It's the same as service. For example, sometimes we use uh, for the background task the intent service, and what this intent service is doing is just the object graph inject uh, in the in the on create that is injecting the dependencies. And I believe, yeah, it will be very same for the async task. Uh, for the async task, you can even do it in the async task constructor. So you can create the object graph in constructor of async task and inject uh, those fields. So you don't uh, use multiple object graphs uh, in, in multiple um, threads, like main thread, UI thread? And uh, sorry, sorry, can you repeat? Do you use multiple object graphs? Uh, so one for the UI thread and uh, another one for background? Processes, uh, yeah, often, mm, because mm, for example, in our app there is like a big model that is injecting some generic dependencies, like the notification manager or context application context, and this model is being uh, extended by all other models in our app. So what we do in the context, for example, for this async task, what I would do is to create another model that just extends the functionality of the context uh, mm, that, is, uh, mm, that is used in, our, in the whole app and then inject dependencies to the constructor. And if you want to test that async task, you will be still able to do that in the same, mm, same way as, as we are testing services. So, so yeah, you will need to, mm, to create the async task yeah, using the empty constructor you could also do it like because async task can have like the constructor that takes argument without any problem. So what you can do also is like inject this async task object 
to my activity and later just, yeah, yeah. No, because y you can have like only one task per, per async task, yeah? If this async task has finished its job, you cannot, cannot retry it. Yeah, so you need to do it in the constructor of async task. Thanks. Is it possible to share the multiple object class share the same uh, singleton? Uh, yep. Um, for example, we keep one big object graph uh, that needs to keep uh, application-wide singletons uh, in uh, in our uh, in our application. So this object graph is kept for all the application lifecycle, and it's being used to via some dependencies that need to be or can be application-wide uh, singletons. Because uh, as this object graph create takes a varax, you can uh, supply as many models for Dagger as you want. So if you want to use one of those singletons that need to be kept as singletons by Dagger, you simply put the, uh, this model that takes care about singletons in here in create. And it's being used. OK. Uh, I got also something for you. Uh, everyone likes spam. Not every spam is bad, but if it's with bacon, then it's not that bad, I guess. Uh, as I am co-organizing in GDG Krakow, we are organizing similar meetups uh, in Poland. And at the beginning of December, we organized the Krakowit conference. This will be the second edition. and. This is free event. Uh, you can just come to Krakow on the 7th of December uh, this year and uh, join the crew, listen to the presentations. But what we really need is you as a speakers. So if something of you has uh, a nice topic to share uh, with, uh, with the community, uh, please feel invited, contact me, and yeah, we can, we can decide. Okay, thank you.